Welcome back, everybody, to the Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door playthrough. This is part 30, the big 3-0. Ah, I always love saying that. And, uh, yeah, with this fancy-pantsy ship, uh, it's gonna take us straight on into Chapter 5. But, well, we have to do some stuff first, because, of course, right? Of course. We have to advance the plot and story and, you know, and get all our lore in and such. Seems we kind of have some problem. Yes, outrageously fine ship. Outrageously. Awesome. It's the SS Flavion. What a shock that he named it after himself. Yes, of course. Yes, okay, well, get on with it. What? What's What's the What's the issue here? Hello? I can. Oh, okay, good. He, he just kind of, you know, motioned like, oh, yeah, just, you know, stop. Stop, stop going on and off on a tangent here. Tangent. Tangent. Sorry. We have no navigator. I see. The highest ranks ranked helmsman. Well, this is all very fancy ship stuff that I'm not quite particularly, you know, skilled. I was going to say skilled because I just saw the word skilled. But yeah, I'm not too well versed in. Also, you know what? That, uh... Hmm. That guy on the far right there with the... Yeah, with the red scarf. It looks a little familiar. Huh. Can't... Can't quite put my finger on it. Oh, well. Maybe it'll come to me later. But anyway. So now, uh, this crazy... Accented... bob -omb just happens to know. This salty... This salty sea bomb over here. Uh, he just knows that, uh... There's this, there's this dude, right? It's called Admiral, he's, his name is Admiral Bobbery. And, uh, he seems to be a very good navigator. But, uh, well, we gotta find him here. Did it, what, was this the thing where he said that Mario was gonna just do everything? <sighs> Great. Awesome. I like how he's not even looking at Mario when he says that. It's just, yeah, it's just, Mario's just too beneath him, apparently. God, that guy's just so irritating. All right, so we're gonna get Vivian here because you know we we gotta get uh, a little bit of t diplomacy going on here, and I feel like I feel like Vivian's probably the best thing for that. Although I forgot that you know we kind of gotta do some walking here, and and you know Ken the Yoshi seems to be very good at helping do that. So I'm just gonna hop on his back, his really really tiny back. He has a saddle, right? Oh no, he doesn't. He just has the the diaper, which um, which by the way I don't think I ever got to mention. Uh, it, with every other colored Yoshi, the, there's actually colored spots on his diaper. Uh, but with the white Yoshi, the spots are actually white. It's, I believe the spots are just the same color as whatever color the Yoshi is. So, you know, if it's the red one, it'd be red spots. But since it's the white Yoshi, it's white spots, so you can't really see them. So, yeah, luckily, with our brand new tube curse mode curse, uh, we're able to go down this guy's chimney and, yeah, this, this seems like him, but, uh, it doesn't really... He doesn't... I don't know, he's just saying that it's not him. I don't know what's going on here. Case of amnesia, perhaps? I mean, he looks like an admiral to me. And he's, you know, he's named Bobbery, so I had assumed that he's some sort of bob type creature, but... I don't know. I guess we'll have to uh, go back and report this to Mr. Flavio. <sighs> is it Flavio or is it Flavio? I'm pretty sure it's Flavio, because, you know, I'm thinking of... Um, uh, what's his name? Fabio, who was very, you know, is a very handsome, sexy dude that I believe he got really popular in the 80s and into the 90s. He was he was kind of like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger-ish, you know, in the fact that he was like, you know, really, he was really, you know, burly looking, you know, handsome faced, you know, stone jawed, or chiseled jawed sort of guy, you know, just all the... All the ladies go crazy over that. But, uh, yeah, he was one of those dudes. Alright. Uh, oh, yeah, so we... So I just have to go and talk to the bartender over here, because this guy is... Well, I mean, he's the bartender, so he hear, overhears everything and probably knows everything that's going on in the town. So, you know, if anybody, he would probably be the best source of information to go to. But, yeah. Uh, it appears that uh, Admiral Bobbery does not want to be disturbed uh, and uh, yeah we've we've got it right this this is actually the guy and uh, like I said we need some diplomacy going on here <laughs> now if you please don't insult us all right come on man 
Oh, this was... I think... There was something... Oh, I don't I don't think it's now. I think it's a little bit later. But yeah. Um... Oh, no, this is it. Yeah. Okay, so Admiral Bobbery says something very, very interesting to Vivian here. Sorry, dear boy, but when I say no, what I mean is no. Huh. Um... So, you know, I really, I could have, like, save-stated this and, and, you know, went with one of the other female characters and saw if he said the same thing. I assume he does. I, I'm under the assumption that he's talking to Mario, even though Vivian was the last person to speak to him. I don't know. It's, it's very, very questionable. I don't know if that's sort of, like, one of the, the things that, um, go to the whole, uh, what is it? It's like the... Uh, gender controversy or whatever with Vivian, but I'm pretty sure that he's talking to Mario. I'm like 90% sure. I don't I don't really know exactly what the whole story is with that specific voice line or that that quote. Why did I say voice line? Oh my goodness. All right. So anyway, uh, blah, 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 blah. little Bobbery though. It's, it, I think this is when it, yeah he starts talking about yeah. So this is the whole thing about Bobbery's tale, and you know. You might end up crying if he tells it to us, but you know what? We're tough. We can handle it. All right, here we go. What exactly happened to Admiral Bobbery that makes him not want to ever go on the, sh on the sea ever again? Okay. Okay. Sounds normal, I suppose. Oh. Well, that's really sweet, and I like that. This, this is a pretty nice story so far. For a time. Oh boy. Yeah, this, those ellipses are, you know, kind of telegraphing something here. The virus, passing cold, no one knew. Uh oh. Uh oh. I mean, come on, everybody has a cell phone now, right? <laughs> Nowadays, right? I see. Well. Wow. Yeah, that's that's kind of deep. That's kind of a... I, I would definitely chalk that up to a sad story. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we have no choice, literally. No, he suffered enough. I actually wonder what, what would happen if I just... Oh, uh, you know what? I'm pretty sure if I picked one of the no options, it would just end the dialogue, and then I would have to talk to him again, and then he'd be like, Oh, are you sure that blah, 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 blah? All right, so Scarlet wrote a final letter to Bobbery that just for some reason this guy just I guess didn't have the guts to give to him this whole time. All right. Well, I mean, wait, didn't she literally just say didn't wasn't his quote literally to tell him or to, to hand this letter to him. Oh, yeah. And he just didn't do it. What's this guy's problem? I don't know. He said he was too cowardly, but I mean, come on, man. You see how upset this guy is. So, unsurprisingly, when we hand this letter of uh, Bobbery's deceased wife to Bobbery himself, uh, good things will happen for us and for him. You know. Finality and all that. It's just, you know. A letter? <laughs> Ooh! He just jumps. Ooh! God, that's a lot of exclamation points. And now we get to read this letter, too, because... Oh, he... Oh, he reads it out loud, I guess. Because, yeah, he's kind of moving up and down. So I assume that means that he's, uh, speaking. Okay, well, I mean, that's... We know that. I, she just, she knows him so well that she just knew that he was gonna uh, blame himself. You are one with the sea as you were one with me. Aw. <laughs> Alright. She just goes into the back room. <laughs> Uh, I feel 2009 playing with Mui, just coming up here and just saying, hmm, wonder what he's doing back there. Hoo 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 hoo. What was that? I, what am, I'm thinking of. 
I mean, yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's back there crying, but, you know, he just, you know, he's too tough of a guy to show that he's crying, but, um, was, I was thinking, when I just said that quote, I was just thinking of uh, the Cave Story playthrough, and the friggin', um, <laughs> being in the, in the bed with, uh, what was her name? Choco! Yeah! Choco. And what was, uh, uh, Curly Brace's panties, good lord. Oh, oh you, Japan. Oh you. I just, I was, I was thinking of my uh, playthrough in seconds with the cave story, and it's, you know, all the, all the, all the very easy lewd jokes that I was able to make there, because, you know, I, I liked doing those, and, uh, and uh, cave story made it very easy for me. Look at this, Super Luigi Book 1, super popular, now on sale. Now, I'm going to assume that those are the stories that we've actually heard directly from Luigi's mouth. But, uh, yeah, now apparently he's putting them in book form, and he's selling them for cash. Okay, you know, I mean, everybody's got a story to tell, apparently. So, uh, the walkthrough told me a particularly useful tip, uh, for this point in the game, just before the start of Chapter 5, um, that you want to actually store some items with the, uh, one of the Toad House stores, um... And the reason for that is because, well, we're not able to go back to Rogue Port or anywhere, really, once we actually get onto this ship for Chapter 5. So in order to actually get items that we, you know, we stockpiled, uh, we can do that by using the amazing magic that the, uh, the item store guys in each of the Toad Shops has, where they can magically teleport items in between them. So they just all share the same items that you deposit, no matter which one you give it to. Uh, now, Zesty was over here talking about this magical cookbook that was apparently in the creepy steeple. Now, if I recall correctly, we were there kind of recently, and we did find a cookbook, and here it is. But unfortunately, in, in order to actually give it to her, we actually had to take her trouble on the troubles board. Which, as I scrolled through, there was quite a number of them that, you know, I, I haven't really been doing because I don't really care. Because I'm pretty sure for the most... Look at Mario's head. He's just constantly tilted. He's tilted! Um, pretty sure for the most part they just give you 20 coins, and I'm not really... I, I don't need coins that badly. Anyway, I love how she just figures this out. Mix a mushroom and a honey syrup. Wow, who would have ever thought... To put two ingredients together. Wow, Zesty, you're just... You're a genius. A cooking genius. Yay, we solved the trouble. Alright, so that's it for that. Now we can, surprisingly, as I think I did mention before, uh, we can now have Zesty mix in two ingredients together. Uh, now I'm going to do a couple of these, I think. Or I think it's just one. The Super Shroom and the Peachy Peach will create the... What is it? The Zest... The Zest Dinner, that's it. And that heals 10 HP and FP in one item, which is very useful. If I recall correctly, the Peachy Peach only re only restored 5 FP. So that's like a net gain of an extra 5 FP. And it cuts down on, you know, my number of items that I have in my uh, my bag here. So yeah, always, always very useful to be able to blend ingredients together. Uh, and at, at the very least, just combine their usefulness into one item. If not, make them even better as one item. Alright, so we're just gonna pull out Vivian here, I guess, because she's the newest partner? I'm not 100% sure why I pulled out Vivian here. I think it was just in case there was some sort of dialogue that my partner uh, had to say here. But no, there is no actual dialogue for the partner in this in these upcoming cutscenes. Uh, yes, there are multiple. I think. I think, yeah. Vivian's just, she's, she's just happy to be here. <laughs> hey, how you doing? She's just talking to the purple bob -omb guy. Alright, uh, also, Admiral Bobbery is there. Uh, just for some reason, I can't see him. He's supposed to be right behind the, the center mast. That, that's what that, that's called, right? The big wooden, wooden stilts? The, those are the masts? Uh-oh. It's an x nod. This is trouble. Come back, dude! Rating you five by infiltration is successful. X not black is aboard the vessel. Hmm. 
pretty sure that's the purple bomb. Yeah, I pegged him for a bad guy. Here we go into the beginning of chapter five. The key to pirates. I love the names of these chapters. It's always it's always so epic when a chapter starts. Also, you know what I didn't get to say earlier in the video? Shine get, which was in you know the the magical back room of uh, Admiral Bobbery's house. So now this whole entire portion is just like uh, Flavio's diaries, uh, where he just kind of, each day, he just kind of writes down what's going on. It's, as you can tell, this is taking multiple days to actually get to our destination of Keel Hall Key. Fla uh, I completely, I just did not read that at all. <laughs> I was just, I was just like paying attention to like the ship. Things are going smoothly, filled with dread. Hmm. You know, he has a really good reason to be filled with dread. I'm not gonna really say any, you know, any reasons why, but, uh... Oh, this song that he's singing is actually useful for something that happens later on in Chapter 5. Uh, something that we need to do very... It's a very specific sort of combination thing. And the song that he sings is actually the key to that combination. There's Bobbery. He's just, he's just there now. He wasn't there earlier. He, he appeared. Alright, uh, no, I don't really see it because, unfortunately, the camera is panned the other way. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. So now he goes, <laughs> look at him! Just goes on for a story while, uh, the, I think it's the purple bob -omb is talking. I'm actually not 100% sure who it is that's talking right now. I can't tell if it's the purple bob -omb or the green toad. The ship stopping. He's still going. Boy, Master Flavio! Oh no, I can't do that. I'm sorry. That that was a terrible. That was a terrible attempt at any sort of accent at, at all. Huh? Take care of it. All right. Well. Way to tick. All right. So yeah, th this this is an accent that, you know, if, if this were back in the days when I thought I knew the names of accents, I would have called a Cockney accent. I'm not 100% sure if that's accurate, but um, that's that's what I'm going with here, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stick with it, so deal with it. All right, quit shoving, I'm working over here. Oh, oh no, <laughs> look at him, oh my god, he's so freaked out. Also, those are the the flame bubbles from the first Paper Mario. The, I believe the blue ones were the ones that we saw at the beginning of the final chapter when we went up to Star Way. And then there were the regular red ones from Chapter 5. <laughs> Look at them go! <laughs> Everybody's freaking out. I'm surprised the hardened sea bomb like Admiral Bobbery is is running around like a, like a crazy nut as well. I, I honestly I was a, oh my goodness. I was actually a little bit disappointed with that. I thought he was gonna be like one of the more like serious, you know, never you know breaks sort of characters. And you know, whatever, he's just kind of freaking out just like everybody else is here. Remain civilized, relax, don't panic. <laughs> Good God! If we can form an orderly line, just jump! Oh my God! He just jumped off. Abandoned ship. Oh my! Oh, well. Yeah, now would seem like a pretty good time to jump off. Oh my goodness. Well, that's trouble, I would imagine. Oh, Flavio's diary continues. The sea washed us ashore. Yeah, now they're at Keel Hall Key, but we've lost three crew members. Oh god. That ghostly thing, the Pirate King. Huh. Day X Heart. This is some interesting day numbers. Salty Bread. Oh, hey, I know what that is! I. Oh my goodness, I think I read about that. I think Reddit had like a Today I Learned or something about that that bread that's like could literally last for years. Oh, 
Well, that's troubling. <laughs> Alright. Well, luckily, Flavio's... Oh my goodness, continuing his hopes here. But that's going to be it for this part of the Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door playthrough. Join me in part 31, where we'll be seeing what's been what's going on here with our shipwrecked crew. And whether or not we'll be able to find our three missing crew members. See you all next time!